everybody welcome back it has been a week or so wow i had a wee mini vacation but uh yeah i got my batteries charged and i am on the loose today in the hot seat the all new unity ut123d yeah i know i say all new a lot on the channel this really is all new brand new from unity um i'm excited about this one Big shout out to Mr. Tools, Mr. Tools for Test. Jerry, thank you so much for sending in the UT123D for the review. And if you haven't used Jerry yet, he is one of the best online e-tailers, best prices, fastest shipping. You can't go wrong. Well, what do you get with the meter? Good question. You get your date of manufacture. Yes, Unity has a really good habit telling us when the meter was actually made. January 2021, pretty darn recent in the scheme of things. Thank you, Unity. Unity also gives us basically a data sheet, quick spec. Uh, you can call it a user manual, but I don't really call it a user manual. It's just a sheet of paper and uh, it's all in Chinese. What's up, Unity? Come on. We like to see a little bit of English as well. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, basically tells you what the specs are. And you know what? Yeah, this is pretty neat it is an upgrade from the ut123 well you know what i'm not going to say it's an upgrade we'll let the review decide that but i did the review the on the uh, ut123 not too long ago and that was a great little meter in fact one of my favorite meters in the cheapo top 10 and uh, for good reason it is super uh efficient quick handy i'm gonna put it up against the 123d today and we'll see how well it compares hey did anybody out there get a chance to check out the eurovision Okay, maybe you're saying, what the hell is Eurovision anyway? Well, it is a really cool countdown. Every country in Europe, well, not every country, but most countries. Uh, what am I going on about? Anyway, check it out. It's a lot of fun, and damn it, I wanted France to win this year. <sighs> but they were all great. Okay, let's get back to the meter. Back to the meter. First impressions, you know what? Hey, awesome. Unity does a stand-up job. In fact, they're probably one of the best in terms of giving you value for dollar uh, great looks great styling great quality control that's the complete package you can't say that for a lot in cheapo land but unity always delivers and uh this meter is no exception looks great feels great um oh my god again again look yeah they didn't give us a tilt stand oh, anyway <sighs> Great quality, um, feels good in the hand, and it's just a super solid, robust little meter. Um, first impressions, excellent job. Test leads aren't bad. They are on the small side, but then again, so is the multimeter. 10 amp, Cat 3, 600 volt, and uh, yeah, not too shabby. As well, those are really super sharp. Um, believe you me, one of the sharpest I've seen thus far. Uh, super, super sharp leads. Ah, yes, they're sharp. Nice, tight fit, uh, looking good. Yeah, no worry about uh, any whoopsie doopsies. Now it's gonna be in there for the long term unless you pull them out. So nice and snug, like a unity now bug in a web. smart meter, well, it's a hybrid, okay? It's smart and it's not so smart, but what, what I mean is, well, you can go into manual mode, or you can override your smartness. Always a good idea to have that as a secondary backup because sometimes, as we know, smart meters just ain't so darn smart. There is no rotary selector switch, strictly a push button. Mm, 2021 technology. Um, that's a good thing. Maybe a bad thing. Depends on how you look at it. What do we have in terms of actual use? Well, we have our NCV live here on the left, our hold on the right, and it's just a standard one touch hold, nothing fancy schmancy. And in the middle, we have our power as well as mode select. Now, by pressing the mode, holding it down for a couple of seconds will bring us into manual mode. At the bottom of the meter, we have our milliamp and high current input on the far left followed by the voltage, resistance, continuity, diode, and capacitance at the top. And at the bottom, we have our common or ground. 4,000 counts, true RMS, smart. What more can you ask for in a cheapo? And don't say yellow. Already we're gonna turn the multimeter on, hit that power mode. Bada boom, bada bing. Oh, not long enough, do it again. And there we go. Oh, gorgeous reverse EBTM display, yeah. And you can see right away it puts us into scan mode, which is basically uh, auto mode. This is what you will get by default. And auto, we're talking voltage or resistance. So if you're testing capacitors, you'll have to switch it to manual mode. All in all though, a pretty sweet looking display. Um, yeah. And I am gonna take this on the outside as well, just to give you guys a little look-see. 
uh, see what it's like in terms of actual clarity and contrast in the outside world. We'll do that at the end of the uh, review, but uh, overall, I gotta say, not too shabby. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, Optin Cheapo UT123. Now, the biggest difference, as you can see, Yes, we have a selector switch here. Let's turn it on. Same reverse EBTN display, um, but yeah, it is gone. They've done away with that selector in the 123D. Now, you know, everything else is pretty well the same, except for the selector switch. Instead, we've got that one push button toggle, but uh, display, everything is identical. Form factor, fit, finish, color, you name it, identical. Reverse side of the meter, identical. Top of the meter, identical. Bottom of the meter, uh, Okay, I, you, you get the picture. And unfortunately, it does bring along one of those caveats, the fact it has no tilt stand. Oh, why? Uh, you know, from what I can see, the way the assembly is done, it would be really super simple just to turn this into a tilt stand. But Unity decided once again to forgo that for some blarty reason. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not going to get upset about it again. But uh, Unity, please, next time, <gasps> tilt stand. When you turn that meter on, you hear that relay, so it does have that relay inside, of course, because it is an auto meter. Um, but uh, it's, it's not really obtrusive. Some of these relays on the chapels are so loud and annoying, but not too bad. Another big, big addition, rather than an omission, thank goodness, for the 123D, is the fact that Unity has given us current. Ura! Yes, we can now test milliamps and high current on our little 123D. Not so with the 123. Oh man, did we lose anything in this transition, in this upgrade? Well, you know what? We kind of did. We no longer have temperature Celsius, Fahrenheit. Bye bye. Not so on the 123D. Unity, for whatever reason, decided not to carry the temperature over to the newer model, but uh, well, <sighs> that's kind of too bad. Usually for my meters that don't have tilt stands, I use a really cool little hybrid tilt stand made by Michael Yamarino. Check the link in the description below. That's a handy dandy little feature. Uh, he created this neat little gizmo and it works great for meters that have no tilt stand. Unfortunately, I'm in the midst of uh, retransitioning my lab and I buried it somewhere and I can't find it, but fear not, it will come back on the channel. As for the majority of the review, it will be on the flat side. And uh, no, I'm not giving my kudos to the Flat Earth Society. Mm, not yet. Started things off as always with the DC precision voltage test. We should be looking at 5.00 volts. And wow, look at that one count out in each separate way. 4.99 for the 123D and 5.01 for the 123. So hey, there is no winner. One was a little high and one was a little low. Quick voltage showdown. Now you wouldn't believe how many times I get emails almost every single time I do a review. Put it up against a fluke, put it up against a fluke. I hear this all the time, it drives me crazy. Anyway, I will put it up against a fluke today. We have another smart meter today, the Fluke 113, which I will be reviewing shortly. Um, another smart multimeter, and they're all sitting right now at 1.00 volts. And that is a good thing. We're gonna take it up right now. 5.90 volts. 5.90 spot on for Mr. 123D, the star of the show on the far right. 5.91 for the 123 in the middle and 5.90 for the fluke. Up, up and away. Let's hit 12 volts even. 12 volts even. 12 even, Steven for the star of the show, 123D. Hey, good job, Unity. 12.02 for the 123 and 12.0. Mm, it's wavering, it's wavering. One or two for the fluke. Okay, up and away. 20 volts even is where we're going. And you can see that 123D is probably the slowest of the bunch in terms of ranging, but it gets there with precision. Look at that. 20 volts even, Steven. Excellent. 20.05 for the 123 and 20.02 for the fluke. Okay, let's max this puppy. 31.99 according to Siglin Power Supply. Wow, 31.98, 123D, oh, 31.99, call me a liar. Awesome, spot on for Mr. Unity. 32.07 for the 123 and 32.02 for the fluke. So there you go, cheapo haters. Mr. Unity, 12D, $20 something cheapo, bested the $200 fluke in terms of precision. 
Who's your daddy? All right, next up is Resistance. Now you can see we're getting that continuity because the Resistance is a little bit low, uh, but that's okay. So I am gonna actually do this in terms of manual mode. And there we go, we are now in manual mode. I think it's only fair. Let's see how it does uh, overall sitting at one meg, even Steven, 0.997 for the one, two, three D. Let's take it up to three megs. Oh, it's nice and fast. Let's try six megs, 5.85, 5.89, getting there. Oh, I said you were fast. <laughs> six megs though, oh, spot on, I love it. 10 megs, here we go. Oh, hey, not too shabby. Back down to one meg. You know what? That is not too shabby at all. At all. Gotta say, in manual mode, this thing really kicks the llamas. But, you know, just for the heck of it, let's put it back into manual, or auto mode, rather, sorry. There we are, back in auto mode. Let's try the same thing. Let's go up to two megs. Three megs, rather, sorry. 2.99. Okay, not too shabby. Let's try six megs. Coming up as 5.9786. Oh, wow. Good stuff. And let's try 10. So definitely a little bit slower to range in auto mode. Look at that. It's taken a while, but it is getting there. 9.99. Let's go now right back down to 1 meg even. And 0.997. So, you know, overall, definitely a little bit slower in auto mode, but still precision was there. Cool. Next up, we're looking at precision. We want to see 100 ohm. Look at that. Oh, yes, so close. 99.9. It did have 100 at first. Wow, this is a really accurate little multimeter. Now, just for the heck of it, let's go into smart mode. See what happens. Whoa. Oh, yes. 100 ohm spot on. Oh, my. That's just me now moving. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, and I'm moving. I'm, I'm excited. I can't stop it. So, hey, I got to say, whoa, good job, 123D. Oh, man, this little guy is surprising me. Now, according to the manual, we've got 4,000 microfarad, a 4 millifarad uh, range here for this meter. And that is a bonus because in the 123, we didn't do capacitance at all. So, hey, not bad. I like it. I like the inclusion. All right, well, let's try standard electrolytic cap this is a 560 microfarad is it a rubicon is it a rubicon it's a nippon it's a good cap here we go 560 Let's see what happens and oh it does not do fair oh my goodness it doesn't do capacitance in auto mode so we got to switch to manual remember for automatic mode resistance voltage uh that's it that's all okay diode there we go that's what we want nf nanofarad survey says how close are we gonna get by the way i was gardening a little bit and i do apologize uh for my um dirty hands well they're clean but it's hard as heck to get that soil out of there okay 0.518 millifarad so yeah that is pretty pretty well spot on now let us try 100 microfarad here we go. I discharged it already. Fear not. 99.4. Not too shabby. Not the fastest, perhaps, but uh, once again, it seems to do the job. I love it. I love that inclusion of capacitance. Oh, I love a meter that has capacitance. <sighs> Next up is dial mode and LED mode. Yes, I've got only four LEDs today. The red one left me. Oh, I hate it when that happens, but uh, fear not. Okay. Starting off with the green LED. Let's make sure we have the anode and cathode in the proper position. There we go. Forward voltage drop and we have illumination. The yellow, yes. Now I'm gonna assume the red would work as well. And oh yes, it, oh, the blue's lit. Now when the blue's lit, you know what's gonna happen to the white one? Yes, it's gonna light too. Look at that, a thing is bright. Oh, forward voltage drop. I'm gonna give it a five out of five because I know the red would have definitely worked as well. Um, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Let's try standard diode. Oh, and we have that nice beep. Yes, there we go. So forward voltage drop with a nice audible beep telling us the diode is good. Now what happens in diode mode if I take those leads and put them together? Oh, excellent. So we have that constant, constant uh, beep. So good stuff. Excellent, great rendition of diode mode. Oh, love it, love it.
3.97 volts, almost 4 volts the output voltage in diode mode. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, I love WaveTech. I'm a WaveTech junkie. Alrighty, it's that time again. Continuity time. I love it. I love it. Here we go. Stock default test probes. 3, 2, 1. Oh, oh. Oh, it is slow. <laughs> and low. Oh, wow. And you know what? We have this great visual indicator here, but it ain't doing nothing in continuity mode. Why? Why? Okay, let's try the Pro Masters. Right, Pro Masters, do us some justice. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, better, 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 better. Still have no reason. I, I don't know why, why they didn't utilize that LED right here at the top for continuity. Why? But it's much faster. Still not super loud, but it is latching and it is much, much faster. Definitely. I give that about a 7 out of 10. Oh, I wish we had a visual indicator too. 54.6 decibels maximum output volume in continuity. Oh, that is not very loud. Now, something that irks me, I, I, I brought back the 123 and check it out. Yeah, we got that awesome visual as well as the audible for continuity. But why, why, oh, why did they do away with that in the new 123D? That is not a step in the right direction, guys. Not at all. Oh, that is a massive fail. Oh, my God. So, ah, uh, why? Yeah. Ugh. Alrighty, we're now in high current mode, 3.20 amps. And look at that, 3.20 amps, not a problem. Now you cannot go into this in manual mode. Basically, you just keep it on regular voltage, put it into the current, and bada boom, bada bing, it will recognize you're in current. Now it doesn't matter if you go from milliamps to high current amps because it's sharing the same circuit. So uh, there's no milliamp fuse to blow. Okay, let's bring it down, 2.7 amps, 2.7 and 2.1 coming up as 2.10 good stuff all right down down 1.10 amp 1.098 let's take it one amp even 998 nice 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 and we are now in low mode milliamp mode 400 milliamps coming up as 398 how low can you go 100 milliamps 97.8 70 milliamps Coming up at 68.7. Let's try 30 milliamps. Oh yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby at all. 20 milliamps. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So all in all, high current and regular milliamp mode seems to work just fine. Good stuff. Quick look at the NCV, not so hot. Here I am at the uh, mains panel and I'm getting one bar, one bar, that's it, that's all. So yeah. Standard light switch, the exact same thing, one bar. Um, at least it is finding something though. But uh, yeah, once again, NCV, uh, for me, it's about a five out of 10. Alrighty, it is teardown time, taking a quick look at the inside. And wow, look at that, oh man. Starting off with that uh, reverse side of the chassis. There's our two connecting terminals for the battery. And uh, yeah, no shielding. Okay, but you know what? Wow, good high quality, high grade plastics here. Love it, love it. All right, let's take a look at that PCB. Yummy, oh yeah, wow, wow, wow. Okay, starting off, let's so look at those input jacks. Now they are of the split variety once again. But uh, don't forget, those are also being um, pressure retained by the back of the housing. So you always have that uh, solid pressure. Um, those aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Now, one thing that's interesting is if we look at that milliamp uh, and high current jack. Wow, we have a double split going on here. So that is in there uh, compared to the one for the um, regular uh, common and the uh, voltage input. So uh, nicely, nicely done. On the high current side, can't argue with that. One nice big 10 amp ceramic 600 volt fuse. Oh, good job, Unity. Loving it. And as well, we have a nice looking current shunt. And look at that, not one, but two PTCs. Two PTCs. Now I don't see any mobs, but um, oh, all in all, looking sweet, looking sweet. There's that big relay that we were talking about right there. HFD31, that is one sweet relay. Nice and quiet, uh, no major clacking going on, and I like it, I like it a lot. Moving up the board, we see our one oscillator at the top. 
crystal oscillator. And look at that, there is our main IC. Here at the top we see the LED, which unfortunately wasn't invoked for that continuity. Um, NCV is embedded into the PCB. We don't have any external filaments going on here. So uh, that's par and course for the so-so NCV. Also have some programmable headers here for factory calibration. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all. You know what? Let's flip it over on the other side. See what's in there. And you can see in this high current... Uh, input here how they've done that those two split connectors uh, joining themselves together like that uh, compared to the the other ones that were just sort of your standard uh, variety but uh, neat neat cool on the reverse side here we have our soft touch buttons one two three of them uh, not much else going on just the clear backing here no glass there or anything uh, main display right here encased in that nice solid plastic and once again this is a higher quality display than you normally see in the cheapo realm good stuff unity um i love it i love it i just you know sometimes in these displays just look so flaky but not here no this is not the case uh wow so there's our piezo very clean very different looking buzzer but uh yeah you can see it's soldered in on the other side really nice job attention to detail here look at the soldering that is gorgeous soldering gorgeous 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 good job unity well i gotta say i am rather impressed let's put it back together come back with my closing thoughts Closing thoughts on Unity, UT123G. Oh yes, this is a great upgrade, Unity. Oh yeah, this is a great upgrade. Oh, I gotta say, I love it, love it. I love it when a multimeter comes out and it just does better than its predecessor. And once again, Unity has stepped up to the plate and hit a home run. This is one cool, great operating little multimeter. Even in automatic mode, it wasn't bad at all. Fairly fast to range and overall very nice to use. That ABTN display is really, really sharp. Uh, works just as well on the outside. Yeah, there's a little bit more glare, but overall, it's definitely doable. Super accurate, true RMS, 4,000 counts, and a cheapo. Hey, what can we say? Only caveat was, yes, why, oh, why are they not using that LED for the continuity? That doesn't make a whole a lot of sense. But I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater because overall, this is one great little meter. The Unity UT123D gets a solid 4.5 out of 5 stars. Yeah, don't let this one walk on by. Don't be shy. Right. Thanks for watching the show, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing. Here we are outside. You can still see that that display quality is really, really good.